We're going to be running some demos and examples, so you want to be on this class. Stay tuned and let's jump into the content again. So far, we are learning about the different options that you have when you are planning to migrate your data to Azure. Now, on this chapter, we're going to be doing an actual migration so we can see how that behaves on the toolings and how do we connect our on-premise machine to what we want to use on Azure, the SQL virtual machine that we have running in our subscription. Uh, the topics that we're going to be talking on this chapter is going to be to review again a little bit about the Azure data services. So we make sure that we all understand the different options that we have. We're going to be also getting to know other data migration tools. We got familiar with one in the previous chapter related with data migration, but now we're going to get to know different options as well that we can use. We can do the Azure migration that we want to do. And we are also have a little glance of uh, the migrations and uh, the application migration service that you can find online to review your website and see if you can do a migration from that website to the cloud as well. It's going to be interesting. Stay tuned, please. So let's go and talk about the Azure data services that we have. As we talked before, we have three different options when we're planning to go to the cloud. We have infrastructure as a service mode in where we can use an SQL server on an Azure virtual machine to do the migration. We also have the platform as a service model in where you can use the Azure SQL managed instance and the Azure SQL database as components to do the migration. The Azure SQL Managed Instance is the intelligent, scalable cloud database service that combines the, broad, uh, the broadest SQL Server database engine compatibility with all the benefits of a fully managed and evergreen platform as a service. The Azure SQL Database is a fully managed platform as a service database engine that handles most of the database management functions such as upgrading, patching, backups and monitoring without user involvement. Azure SQL Database is always running on the latest stable version of the SQL Server Database Engine and patches OS with 99.99% .99 availability. In the SQL Server on virtual machines, uh, we learned that we can run these virtual machines in different geographic uh, regions around the globe, which is also a great option. And you can select the different machine sizes that you have available in order to meet your requirements. Also, the SQL Server on virtual on Azure virtual machines is going to allow you to have an automated updates uh, running, automated backups, high availability, and uh, excellent performance. Azure Virtual Machines offer different machine sizes to meet the various workloads and demands. SQL Server VMs also provide, provides automa automated storage configuration, which is optimized for your performance requirement. For more information about configuring storage for SQL Server VMs, see the storage configuration for SQL Server VMs documentations. It's going to be plenty information there about all the different mixes that you can have have for SQL servers running on Azure virtual machines. The other option that we learned was the Azure SQL DBs, in where it's uh, going to be an always running on the latest stable version of SQL Server Database Engine, and it's providing a 99.99% .99 availability. It's a great option for your machine, for your migration. SQL Database can be the right choice for a variety of modern cloud applications because it's enabled you to process both Relation, relational and relational data and non-related structure such as graphs, uh, JSON, spatials, and XMLs. Keep that option uh, in your mind when you're planning to have a past kind of migration. And the Azure SQL database managed instances, as we learned, are intelligent, scalable databases that can combine with different uh, uh, applications that you need. You can have uh, SQL managed instances has near to 100% compatibility with the latest SQL Server Enterprise Edition, which is something that uh, some organizations look when they are moving to the cloud their data. They also provide a uh, native virtual network environment that implement the address for the common security concerns that any business model can have. 
those SQL managed instance allow you to have existing SQL server customer to just live and shift their on-premise application to the cloud with minimal applications and database changes. At the same time, SQL managed instances preserve all the past capabilities like the automatic patching and version updates, the automatic backups, hey availability, that, that drastically reduce management overhead and TCO. Now, we also learned that there is some difference between SQL database and SQL managed instances. They have plenty things in common, but there is some little differences that you can take advantage on. The way the availability is managed in the availability groups is a little bit different. In the SQL database, you are going to have a 99.99% to 99.995% of availability. In a managed instance, only 99.99%. 99. The backups uh, comments are a little bit different because on the SQL database, only the system initiated the uh, automatic backups, while on the SQL managed instances, the user uh, can is initiate some copy only backups to Azure Blob Storage, but you have that option there. Again, the SQL managed instance has almost 100% of compatibility with SQL Server Enterprise Edition, and that is going to be probably the reason that is going to move you to go to an, a managed instance. If you want to do no changes and practically a leaf and chief of what you have with no changes at all or really few, uh, while the SQL database is going to offer you more comfort and more options around, it's going to be uh, probably requiring you to do some little changes that necessary. And maybe one of the, the big uh, differences between the two is the cross database transaction. For Azure SQL databases, we don't have that option available, but for Azure SQL managed instances, yes, within the instance. And for that, there is plenty information available to review in order to determine which of the two Pass options is better for your data migration project. And let's not forget about the other options. Not everything is SQL related. We all love SQL Server, but SQL also offers some other flavors that we can take advantage on the cloud, like Postgres SQL, MariaDB, or MySQL, that can help us to have some kind of refactoring or innovation in the projects that we are implementing. Now, let's talk about the data migration tools that we have available. As we saw, there is some guides that you have available that you can use at any time. So maybe that's the first point that we want to refresh here. You can get details, step-by-step -step guidance about how to do your migrations with SQL Server, with Oracle, DB2, MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, MariaDB, even Access, SAP, or any other table storage that you are having on Azure that you can integrate in your migration strategies. So make sure that you get familiar with this documentation because it's going to help you very much. About the tooling, on the previous chapter, we learned about how you can use the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit anytime you need it. It's a simple software that you go and install and you can get access to the inventory of the information that you need. It's fantastic when you are getting the responsibility to migrate plenty servers and maybe you are not quite familiar with the details on each of those, so you don't know exactly what is there, which version is there, what sizes uh, or databases are we talking here? Well, this is going to become your best friend. It's going to be an easy way to run that assessment. Remember to set the firewall properly in order to be able to extract the information that you need and put the, fiber, the firewall uh, back to where it was after you are done. Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit is going to be a fantastic way to help you during your migration strategy. However, that is not all. 
is not only about what you can assess, it's also the migration itself. And in a few, in the next demo, we're going to be learning how to use the Data Migration Assistant, or, or called DMA. This is going to help you detect compatibility issues that can impact the database functionality in your new version of SQL Server or SQL or Azure SQL uh, database. If you want to check for any compatibility issues between the server that you are migrating from and the server you, that you are migrating to, this is the tool to use. Compatibility issues are typically the biggest cause of migration failures. The database migration tool enables you to perform and check your existing system on uh, that you can either make fixes prior to the migration or you can plan to fix those post migration. The important thing is for you to know where the differences are. There is other tools that you can also uh, take in, in advantage. Uh, for example, the SQL Server Migration Assistant is going to help you with those migrations related with SQL. It's a tool designed to automate the database migration to SQL servers from Microsoft Access, DB2, MySQL, Oracle, SAP. So it's a great tool to have as well, and you can use it for your migration when you are talking about SQL Server only. And finally, the database migration services or DMS is going to be a great way to manage your migration projects. The Azure Database Migration Services en enables you to perform large scalable database migrations from within the Azure portal. Azure Database Migration Services integrated some of the functionalities of the existing tools, like the Database Migration Assistant, like the SQL Server Migration Assistance, and like the Data Experimentation Assistance that are going to help you to have a more comprehensive knowledge of what is going on on your customer environment and maintain the highly availability solutions that you need. This enabled you to streamline the process of the database migration and have a single place to effectively manage the execution of any data platform modernization project. And you can do this on many flavors, SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, DB2, MongoDB. But perhaps the biggest benefits of these services is the ability to provide near to zero downtime on the data sources that enable live database migrations. This enables you to speed up the database migration process with minimal disruptions. Although you also have the ability to perform offline migrations if you wish to do it that way. So pretty much this tool is putting together all the rest that we have that we can run on the server level Level and do the migration directly from the Azure portal. You want to use this service again when you have large projects to manage. For mostly scenarios in where you need to migrate one or a few databases, the Azure Migration Assistant is going to be a great tool for you to use as well. So options are in the table, and that's good because that allows you to set the best path for success for your particular uh, data migration project. All that being said, I think it's important for us to start using these data migration tools that we have available. And let's start with the data migration system, DMA. With this one, we're going to be able to do an assessment now about the potential impacts that we can have in the migration process that we are planning to do. For that, we will go back to the demo environment that we were using in our previous data migration chapter and keep the migration going from there. As you remember, in the previous chapter, we were able to create a resource group in where we were having all our resources related with this migration. The SQL migration demo 01 was the one that we created. We did the uh, Azure Virtual Machine right here, and right here we have an SQL server running on that machine. We also have all the disks and different artifacts that these environments require, and we created a storage account that I mentioned to you we're going to be needing this one in order to synchronize the backup process from the local machine, the one that we are about to migrate, to this one, which is the machine that is going to receive the new database on Azure. So this is what we have so far. Let's keep running this demo deeper to see what can we do. 
let me go back to the London machine that we were working before. And this one, as you remember, this is the London machine that we were using before, and a machine that is not connected to our environment. And right there, what we did before was to run the assessment to get uh, the different toolings uh, that we need to understand what was happening on this machine. Let me go back to the machine right there. So we have the machine there. Now what we want to do is we're going to be opening the data migration assistance that happens to be already installed on this machine. However, you can get it at any time that you need and the machine is going to automatically check for updates when you need it. In order for look to this tool in case you don't have it pre-installed in your environment, you only need to go to your favorite explorer and put the Microsoft Data Migration Assistance and you are going to get access to the tool for download and execution. I'm going to go ahead and install the tool. I'm going to set the agreements uh, that it has. I'm going to install this one and I'm going to wait for the installation to be done. Once we finish with the installation, I'm going to check this one right here. So get launched as soon as soon I click the finish button right here. Very good. This is the data migration assistance. And you have a couple of options when we're talking about this tool. You can do an assessment with it, and you can actually do the migration with the tool. And we're going to be doing both things on the, on the demos today, on these chapters. But let's begin with the assessment right here. So the first thing that I want to see is the different targets that I have. As you see, I have the op the option to go to an Azure SQL database. I have the option to go to an Azure SQL database managed instance, to an SQL server on Azure virtual machine, or to any other regular SQL server that I want. So this tool can also be used on-premise. If you want to migrate to one on-premise server to the other, if you have the right connectivity, you have the option right there. But now we're focusing on the cloud. So first, let's start saying, hey, you know what? I want to see if I can migrate this database to an Azure SQL database. I'm going to select that one right there. I'm going to do an assessment, and I'm, I'm going to call this SQL to SQL server, uh, and I'm going to call this uh, 01. Okay, so right here, SQL to SQL server, and I'm going to select that I want to go from SQL server to an Azure SQL database, and I'm going to create this assessment. I'm going to click next. It's going to ask me what the sources are. So first, I'm going to be working on this machine. This is the London machine. You can put her uh, the name of the machine, or you can put the uh, local host, and that should work. I'm going to remove the encryption from the connectivity, and I'm going to set that I'm going to be using Windows authentication because I know the user and the password. I have the databases right here. So you see that on this machine, there is all these databases going on uh, on the SQL server. So I want to do that. I want to set add and select all of them for this assessment. And now I'm going to start assessment. The assessment is going to check two things for me. First, the SQL server feature uh, parity, and then the compatibility issues that you may face. As you see, this one right here is telling us that there is some sort of uh, different issues that I need to work on. Nothing of this is, is fatal, by the way. These are uh, easy to fix uh, issues that the migration can produce, but now you know that in advance. And it's going to give you solid recommendations about how to fix the problem if you want to go for this particular migration. These are the different settings that he's telling you and the different issues that he's reporting with the different recommendations about it. You can also see, is there any compatibility issue on this migration? That assessment is running right now. As you can see, now the assessment for compatibility issues is complete, and we have no compatibility issues whatsoever to worry about. So if this is the kind of migration you want to do, you only need to deal with these issues reported on the SQL server feature parity, and as soon as you get this fixed, you can get the assessment run again and get a new clean page if you are able to nail it.
But now let's see what other options do we have. The other migration that we want to do an assessment is going to be from SQL to SQL virtual machine. SQL virtual machine. And I'm going to select right here that I want to go to an SQL server on an Azure virtual machine. By the way, we have one of these that we created in our demo before. So probably if this, if this assessment goes well, we're going to be selecting this option for our real migration later on. But first, let's run an assessment to see how this one is looking. I'm going to go ahead and click next. I'm going to set the same thing. I want to connect to London. I have here all the databases that I want to assess. And now I'm going to start the assessment. As you can see, the assessment is done now. Uh, we have no compatibility issues to worry about. So our strategy to move this SQL server living on this machine to an Azure SQL virtual machine uh, makes sense and could be a really good option for this migration. But now let's do one more. Let's go to assessment and let's say, hey, I want to do SQL to SQL manage instance and see how that assessment goes for me. So I'm going to select database manage instance here and I'm going to create this new assessment type. We're going to be checking for compatibility issues and then we're going to click next. We're going to be selecting the same machine, the same set of databases. And now we're going to be running the assessment uh, in case that we want to do this on an SQL managed instance. So let me click start. That was super quick. So we have no issues to worry about from the SQL server feature parity. What about the compatibility issues? Let's take a look. At this point, the assessment for the compatibility issues runs successfully and we have nothing to worry about. So this is another viable migration for us, both going to an Azure SQL managed instance if we want to go to a more uh, pass environment or we can go to an Azure SQL running on a virtual machine if we want to have a more ES uh, migration. The two options are viable uh, to us at this point. With this, we did the migration or we did the assessment to do this migration. Let me go back to our uh, slides in order to see what else we have there, because what is pending now is to do the final migration. But for that, we need to understand uh, some concepts that is important to talk about before we do it. First, Azure Migrate uh, is going to help us then to uh, work as a central hub for database migrations. As you saw, we have some tools that we can use on the server that is going to be migrated, and then we can manage from there the migration, or we can also have the option to do an Azure migration project and manage the whole migration from the Azure portal. Both options are via viable. Uh, maybe the difference is going to be that you want to use an Azure migration project from the portal when you are managing large migrations and you are connecting uh, many environments together that you want to have and you need to have more control over the complexity that that could bring. For regular migration from single or few databases, using the tools on the server are going to help you as well to do a quick migration. In Azure portal, you need to follow the necessary steps in order to create the instance for an Azure database migration service and then run the migration from there. It's going to be a server that is a service that is available to you anytime that you need it. We also uh, learn at this point that we have multiple scenarios. That's why you have many options that you can go. There is many things that we need to take in consideration. Sometimes we're going to be working on Windows servers, but sometimes are going to be running the databases are going to be running on Linux. So we need to make the integration of that. We are going to have SQL databases for sure, but there is plenty of non-SQL databases that could be integrated on the migration. You also need to assess 
what is going on with the web application that is probably using any of these uh, databases. And at the end of the demo today, I'm going to be showing you the app migration service that you have online in order to do an initial assessment for that. We need to take in consideration if there are any virtual desktop environment, any big data boxes that we need to take care of, or even if we are talking about migrating uh, environments running in Bingware or in Hyper-V, or if it's or, 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 or if is really a physical server what we are migrating. In addition to that, we can do this integrating the services for migration on premise, but you can also migrate whatever you have in AWS to Azure or in GPC to Azure, and it's possible to do through these tools. That's why you have so many options, and that's why it's important to use the different guidelines that is going to take you step by step in any of those migrations. It's important to use some sort of framework when you are talking about uh, migration, migrating data, because it's not just about the velocity of the migration, it's about the availability of the applications that require that data and the security on the data while is migrating and when is migrating and living in the new repository. Your first task is to plan your company migrations to Azure strategy. You need to put together a plan to present to your leadership team to get the support and approvals, and in every situation is different. And that's why you need to get different tools that allow you to explain what is going to happen and how it's going to happen. You can use a framework of uh, assess then migrate, optimize, and monitor uh, what is going on as a path for migration. Each stage is focused on particular aspects of ensuring the successful of your migration. And that's why we want you to learn the different options. And that's why we want you to understand the different mix that you can do from databases and not only SQL, but also non-SQL environments. Because all together is gonna tell you what is gonna be the best strategy to follow when you are doing your migration. Because of the complexity in the migration processes and the different scenarios that you can face, is plenty information that you can use to make the best decisions. In this slide, we're going to be finding several links to Microsoft official documentation that you can use in the path uh, to migrate your data and to be successful on that one. Take a moment to visit those websites, make them favorites for you if you are responsible for data migrations, because right there you are going to find goal information about how to do a migration successfully, integrating the different variables that your uh, scenario includes. But now, we talk about how to assess, we talk about uh, the different options to migrate. I think it's clear for all of us at this point, the different options as EAS and PASS, and the different responsibilities that we have as users and owners of the data uh, for every of those options that we learn. We learn as well that you can do this with different toolings that you can install on the server to be migrated, and from there migrate, migrate the data to Azure. But we also learned that these tools are being integrated now in an Azure data migration tooling that allow you to manage the whole migration from the portal when this one is uh, complex and large enough uh, in order to use that mechanism. For a few databases, you are going to be one to use, for example, the data migration assistance to get the migration done. And we're going to keep the demo that we were doing at this point. Let me go back to the environment that we are building together so we can continue with our demo. As you remember, at this point, we have access to this London machine that we don't have an Active Directory uh, access to it, but we know who is the user and password for the administrator, and we were able to connect to the machine because we did the uh, proper firewall configuration in order to uh, be here. And we've run already a couple of tools we learn first that we can go and run the Microsoft Assessment Toolkit in order to determine what components are in the machine and get a detailed reports like this one, in which you can get all the different information and components of the artifacts living in your database, allowing you to understand better what is going on and to frame better what the migration includes to upper management or operations when you are trying to explain the reason why you want to do this migration.
The second thing that we learn is that we can use the data migration assistance in order to now that we understand what is running on the machine, that we can do different assessments in order to figure what is going on. At this point, we're going to be going to this machine and we want to do now a different thing. We don't want to do an assessment, but we want to do a migration. And there is certain things that we need to take care of in order to do this properly. But I'm going to start the migration uh, process wizard here, and we're going to be doing some little fixing that we need to do in order to allow the migration to be successful. To this one, I'm going to call migrate SQL to SQL VM demo 01. Okay, and I'm going to set this is going to be a Azure SQL Server that I want to move to an SQL Server on virtual machines, and then I'm going to create this migration. And the first thing that I need to do is to connect to my uh, local server. So I'm going to tell, okay, I want to go to London. I'm going to be using Windows authentication for that. And my target server for that, we're going to go back to our Azure environment. If you guys remember, just close this right here. Let's go to resource groups. If you guys remember, we have this resource group created. We have our storage account here that we're going to be needing in a minute in order to do the migration successfully. The backups are going to be leaving here and both this virtual machine and the London machine needs to have access to this one. You remember that I copied some scripting before that we are going to be uh, using in a moment here. So uh, uh, hold tight to that. And this is what we have. Uh, on this, we're going to click on the machine that we want to migrate. We don't have a DNS for this machine yet. So that will be a good idea uh, to have right here. So let's go and configure the DNS. And we're going to be naming this. We're using the same name, but given a full DNS is going to be adding the east us2 cloud apps azure.com to my dns i'm going to save this one right here okay so this is the machine that i want to have access to i'm going to go back to the machine now i'm going to fresh a little bit so now I have here my DNS. I'm going to copy here into my magic notes. We're going to be needing that in a second. I'm going to copy that right here. And there is some, a few things else that we need to do, but uh, I'm going to do it when they are necessary so you understand why we have to do that. Now we're going to put here the name of the server that we just have. Uh, as I don't have uh, copy paste capabilities to this machine as simple, I need to use this tool. But now I have there the machine and I know that I can connect to this machine uh, using SQL server authentication. And for that, I want to use the user and password that I created for this environment. It's going to be SQL admin. right there and this is going to be my password remove the encryption right there and i'm gonna go next to see what happens so now the assessment or the tool is trying to connect to say, hey, do I have access to that source and target location that you're saying? And that is exactly what is going to be validating. Let's wait. As you can see, we have an error right here on the top. There are validation errors in the source or target server. Please fix the issue and go to the next step. 
If I read more, I can get the details uh, as you can see here. Invalid target server, details were specified for the migration and network related of instance a specific error occur establishing a connection to the SQL server. The server was not found or was not accessible and is inviting me to validate that location. So as I know that I have access to the London thing, the problem is probably on the target server. And right there, I know what it is, uh, but could be a really headache if you don't figure this out. Let's go to the Azure portal to see what could be the problem right there. This is the virtual machine that we were running right here. And as you can see, before we do this, as you can see, we're telling to this target server that we are going to access this machine through an SQL server authentication. It's not a Windows authentication because I not necessarily want everybody to have access to the new machine, but to the instance I do. So there is a couple of things that I need to do to make that happen. For that, in the virtual machine that you are right here, if you go back to your resource group, this is the resource group that we created right here, all the companies that we have so far. I'm going to select the machine that I want. And then this is an SQL server uh, virtual machine. You are going to find this SQL server configuration option right here. You're going to want to click on that one. And you want to manage your built-in machine a little bit in order to provide what you need. One of the things that we want to change is we're going to go here on security. We're going to change the SQL connectivity. As you see, it's set as private. So only within the virtual network can be accessed through the SQL connectivity. That's why it's failing for us because that London machine, that is just not part of it, that server is not part of our virtual network. So in order to make this possible, I want to make this public to the internet. So I'm going to be capable to connect to that SQL uh, through the internet, through the port uh, 1433, and I'm going to enable the SQL authentication. That, that is the authentication that I'm looking for to provide. And right here, I'm going to tell which is the user and which is the password for that instance that I want to use. Now that I have that, I'm going to apply these changes and I'm going to wait for those to be applied to my machine. Let's hold time. As we can see, the changes that we need to the deployment happens already and now the change uh, occur in my environment. It is done. So let's go back to our London server to see if now we can get connected. We are using the same machine that we said before, SQL authentication, and we're using the SQL user and password that we defined. Let's close this one right here, and let's click next once again. Very good. So we were able to now connect to the source and to the target databases, and we can start the in a really important point. This is telling me that I need to do my backup folders permission properly. I need to have both the London server and the target server with access to allocation in where they can manage the backup operation. So for that, what we are going to be doing is to configure properly the U drive uh, as a map drive that we can use for this migration. I want to fix that then right away. One way to do it that I like very much is you can connect directly to your SQL uh, Management Studio. So let's go to the SQL Server Management Studio and let's do a couple of tricks that I'm pretty certain you are going to love. Very good. Now we are in the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio on the London machine. We're going to be first connecting to the London server to see if we're able to see the databases right there. And there they are, all the databases that we are looking to migrate. Now, as I know that I can connect to the other server, I'm going to go here and establish a new connection. But this time, I'm going to connect to the server that we just created. Go back to the machine right here and I have the DNS name that I needed. I'm going to copy that 
and I'm gonna go back to the London machine to do what I want. Uh, we're gonna go here and we're gonna send this text to the machine. There you go. And then we're saying it's gonna be an SQL authentication. The login is SQL admin. SQL admin and the password. I'm going to copy the password right here. Very good. And I'm going to connect. So now I do have visibility of the Azure virtual machine database that is running on Azure for us is very cool. And right here, we don't have any database yet from the ones that we need to migrate. But my Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio is allowing me to see both. The reason why I'm doing this is because first, help us to understand what is happening right here. We are running this migration right here. We're about to tell where the backups for these two machines are, but we are understanding what is going on on this one. And we're seeing both servers. We know that connectivity is not a problem, but we still need that sharing location in order to do the backups. So the first thing, I'm gonna uh, place my cursor right here in the London machine, and I'm gonna click the new query uh, tool or the new query button right there. So now we're going to be running a few common lines that we need here that I'm going to be sharing with you uh, as a model. These are the comments that I normally run when I'm doing this kind of migrations because this is going to allow me to tell to you both SQL databases where they can find uh, the, the backup share in order to save the information. This is a not, this doesn't change really often. Uh, to be honest, I, I use this line all the time, but you need to customize these two lines right here a little bit in order to adjust to what we are doing right now. So if you remember when we created the storage account before, and for that, I'm gonna go back to the Azure environment. I'm going to go back to our resource groups, to the one where we have all the components. And we have right here the storage account that we created. You remember we did, that, we did this in chapter uh, two when we were talking about data. So now if we go here to the file share and to the, to the file share that we created right here, if I click on the three buttons, I click on the connect thing, I can tell to this uh, tooling to help me out, being that in Windows, Linux, or Mac, to help me create that drive letter that I can use for this. And I like to use the letter U for this one. So I'm gonna put that, and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm allowing to share my storage account key right, because that's the way to connect. So I have this script right here that is gonna help me to customize what I'm looking for to you. So I'm gonna copy this one and I'm gonna go back to that notepad that I'm working on, right? Old fashioned notepad is, uh, is really useful sometimes. So let me go back to that. It's gonna be this one right here. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go, it will be down the same file, and I'm gonna copy this new content. And I know this works, right? Because I use it all the time. The only need that I need is to change a little bit these commands to use the right location of the storage account that I'm using and to provide the proper uh, user and password to connect to that storage account, right? As you can see, this information right here, do not match with this one right here because this is from a previous run and this is what we are doing right now. So this is all happening live for us. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this part and I, I want to be really careful of what I copy and paste because I, it is different the format right here. So I'm gonna go here and change this little piece to that. Okay, so we're customizing a little bit our machine. The other thing is the user that we know is this one right here. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna copy that right here, up to here. And now, and now we want to take that password, which is gonna be all this stuff until here. 
gonna replace that right here. So I have my right password for the storage account. And now I need to take uh, this line as well, and I'm gonna paste it and replace this one right here. Once you are done editing your file, you, we did some little changes right here in order to bring from the query that we just copy pasted from before, we took that uh, certain names that we needed in order to fix the script that we have. And once we have reflected the right storage account, the right user password and file share that we want to have, you can go and copy all these lines and go to the machine that you are working on. So I'm going to copy this and go back to our London machine to continue with the migration. First, I'm going to then finish the mapping to the shared drive that they need. So I'm going to click on the London machine first and I'm going to create a new query from there. I'm going to copy what I brought from before. So it's going to be uh, all this text, we're going to bring it to the environment. We cannot run all the comments at the same time because it's going to give you an error. So we're going to first go to enable the advanced show options, and then we are going to enable the XP CMD shell to be executed right there. So I select that and execute. Now I'm ready to run these lines that we brought from before. Boom. And right there, as you can see, we were able to connect to the storage accounts. We were able to complete the commands that we drive. And then we have the U drive already available for us that we can be using for our project. So this is fantastic. London already have access to the storage account. And not only that, to the file share that we need the backups to be leaving. Now let's do the same, but now to the machine that is living in Azure. I'm going to copy this as it is, and I'm going to click right here on the virtual machine that I have running in Azure, and I'm going to set a new query, and I'm going to put this right here, same code, and I'm going to go here and run the first part, and then I'm going to run the second part, and now I'm ready to run my comments, and there you go. This one already have it mapped in the U directory. I'm going to now dis uh, disable the XP SIM shell, CMD shell from here, and I'm going to do the same on the other machine that I was. Okay, all good. We are connected. So if I go back to my migration assistant right here, he was asking to me which drive uh, we want to use in order to do the migration. So it's going to be the U drive, the one that we want for that, the one that we just map, and this is all the databases that could be migrated. In order to make this a little bit more uh, simple from the time perspective, I'm going to disable some databases that I'm not going to migrate at this time, and I'm going to stay with the main database for Adventure Works and the data warehouse that they have right there. So now we can go and click Next. is going to gather and verify some of the metadata that we provided. And then we can start the migration right now. We can go and click on Start Migration. And this is going to take our two databases that we selected on this case uh, to the migration to our new Azure SQL running on a virtual machine. It's going to take a little bit. So let's hold tight while the migration gets complete. As we can see now, the migration is complete. Both databases are now migrated to our brand new SQL server running on a virtual machine in Azure. The time that takes these two databases to migrate is uh, reported right there, five minutes and four minutes each, and both are already on the cloud. And we can verify that. Uh, if we go back to our uh, management studio for SQL and you refresh 
your connectivity to the virtual machine, we should now be able to see a couple of new databases that were not there before, AdventureWorks and AdventureWorks Data Warehouse. You can do the same for all the rest of the databases if you need it. You can do all the databases at the same time if it's possible as well. For the, for the time uh, perspective, we did only these two databases as part of the migration. Something also that is important is precisely that way that we use to do this migration is the same that you can do for anything else. You can export this result or you can go back here and do any other migration in the same model. If you decide to do a migration to a different set uh, instead of an uh, Azure SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine and you want to use Manage Instance or Azure SQL Database, the process is going to be quite similar. The only differences are going to be around the connectivity that we're going to be doing to those devices or to, do, to those artifacts on the cloud. Now, let me go back to our presentation. With this, we conclude the demo uh, for these uh, two chapters. At this point, you should be able to see and to do uh, an assessment on your machine. You can install different toolings in order to figure what is going on on any server that you need to be migrating in order to determine those databases. Uh, the other important factor right here to take in consideration is the velocity of the migration. Once you are properly connected, you are going to be able to do your migration quite quickly. And then you're going to need to do some little changes in your application if you want to use the new source of data or in your DNS uh, in any way. Now, we want to give you the last piece of information in order to understand uh, all the different pieces that are related with our migration. This is not necessarily data related, but definitely all the databases has front end applications that use those databases or uh, feed those databases. So it's important to also understand how can I know if my application or my website is uh, ready to be migrated and what things needs to be considered when that happens. For that, we want to introduce you to the Migrate to Azure application service. It's an, a super easy to access application. You can find it online. We're going to be seeing a quick demo in a second in where you can pretty much identify what you want to do or if your application is ready to move. This way you can assess your site to get details report of all the technologies used uh, and whether, uh, whether they can be hosted on an app service or not. Assessments start by providing a public endpoint, which is scanned to provide the details of all the technologies that are there, which are, the com the, which are then compared to other sites hosted on app service to generate a unique, accurate assessment report uh, for your site. This tool will tell you if your site framework and hosting model is fully supported for migrating over to Azure App Services. Start your migration process by downloading the Migration Assistant and follow the steps to migrate your app, which you got familiar today about it. So how this goes is quite simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a browser right here that we can see together and then we can navigate into the migrate services, which is this one right here. So if you go app migration, if you go, for example, and you put the app migration in your browser, so you go right here and you put something like Microsoft uh, app migration right there, you are going to be finding that there is uh, this website right here 
which is migrate to Azure App Service that is the one that you want to access. It's the same that I have right here. So if you go here and you said, hey, you know what? My site, I'm going to assess Contoso.com to see if they are, this website is available to be migrated. You just click on assess and then it's telling you your site framework and hosting model is fully supported for migration over to Azure App Services. Start your migration process by downloading the migration assistant and follow the steps to migrate your app. The reason why we're telling you this is because it's important to understand what is happening from the front end perspective uh, in order to understand how do you want to migrate your data. And if you have the opportunity to move from a hosting standard uh, model that you are using to use Azure App Services instead, then you are saving a lot of money right there. And that is going to help you to also justify the overall project that you are putting together. Also, you can get here, here plenty information about different artifacts on this configuration that you can use in the reporting that you need to provide to your management or to your uh, security and operation teams in order to get support for your migration project. So this is the way to know if your website or if your front end application on the web is able to move to the cloud or not. Now, let's go back to our final slide for today. Again, Learning this material is a big step forward, becoming a Microsoft Certified. Microsoft has certification paths for many technical job roles, and it shows that you are keeping the pace with today's technical roles and requirements. Check out these related certifications and gain a new professional edge. What a fantastic day we enjoyed together today. We have the opportunity to learn about how to select, identify the best strategies to migrate your workloads to Azure, your infrastructure, your data, how to keep all of that secure. Keep the learning going. Many resources were made available to you during the classes, so we want you to keep learning and get certified if that's something that moves you as well. We are happy to have you again in any of our classes, but for now, it's time to say goodbye. So thank you for your time and I hope you enjoy your class.